First, though, here on Verified Live, we have a BBC investigation which suggests at least 25,000 Russian soldiers have been killed in Ukraine, four times higher than the figure acknowledged by Moscow. The research also suggests many of the casualties are now older fighters with little or no training. Significant numbers have also been recruited from prisons. Here's our correspondent Olga Ivshina with this special report. These are the war graves Russia doesn't want to talk about. Since December, the BBC has located seven new cemeteries dotted across Russia and occupied Ukraine. They're filled with the graves of poorly trained fighters. Many were prisoners recruited by the notorious Wagner mercenary group. And the cemeteries are growing rapidly. This one is about 20 times bigger than it was six months ago. Since the start of the war, we have been verifying photos of graves and social media posts with the independent Russian website Media Zona and volunteers inside the country. So far, we have identified 25,000 names. This is four times more than Russia has acknowledged. It's illegal to report anything but the official death toll inside Russia. So we have come to Kyrgyzstan to speak to the families of fighters who have died. Hundreds of people from countries like this that were once part of the Soviet Union have signed up to join Putin's forces. Filming TikToks on the way to war, 21-year-old paratrooper Sergakbek is typical of those who died at the start of the conflict, a young, highly trained professional soldier in the Russian army. He always wanted to be the first. I think that's why he decided to join the military. And there he was also given the choice, apparently. He chose to be there. Go to war, you mean? Yes, yes. As a professional soldier, he was buried with full military honours after he was killed in action in May 2022. But six months later, in a nearby village, there was no military funeral for another fighter, Ayan even though he also died on the front line. That's because he wasn't a professional soldier, but a prisoner serving a seven-year sentence for assault. He had signed up to fight for the mercenary group Wagner, hoping to win his freedom in return for a six-month contract. A man called and told me that my son died fighting in Ukraine. I was shocked. I asked, how come my son is even at the war? Did my son die for nothing? Am I going to cry until the end of my life? The deaths of Sirgakbek and Ayan show how Russia's war has changed. In the first three months of the conflict, it lost large numbers of professional soldiers. But in the past three months, it's non-professional fighters who have recently joined the Russian forces that are dying in greater numbers. The shift in demographics and Russian losses reflects not only the fact that the Russians lost a large number of their professional troops early in the war, but also the fact that they've shifted their tactics. They now see their professional soldiers as a resource that is to be held in reserve and only used when the conditions are right. Now they are letting the brunt of that reconnaissance offensive activity being led by mobilized troops that they treat in quite a disposable way. Only publicly reported deaths are captured by our account. Estimates from Britain's Ministry of Defence suggest the true figure is likely to be at least twice as high. The BBC contacted the Russian government for comment, but it has not responded. And every day, the messages and photos of graves keep coming. That was Olga Ivchenko with that uh, special report. Well, uh, let's turn to President Putin because he has warned there is a very serious risk of NATO becoming involved in the war in Ukraine. He was speaking at an economic forum in St. Petersburg amid reports Western countries are set to announce plans to train Ukrainian pilots to fly US fighter jets. Well, Mr. Putin said that Russian military would have to consider how to respond if planes located at air bases outside of Ukraine were used to attack Russian forces. <laughs> Leopard tanks are burning. F-16s will burn in the same way. I have no doubts. But if they're used outside of Ukraine's borders to be used in combat, we will have to look at how and where we are going to target the weapons that are going to be used against us in the battlefield. There is a very serious threat that NATO is going to be involved in this military conflict.